So I just joined the meeting. Um, I don't know if that's helpful or not. <laughs> I was just trying to make sure I could get on. Started. We can set up the TV today or not? I can't. Yeah. Do you? I don't. That's what we did with the back side. Yeah, I bet we had shows up. Seen. Well, like the camera scene. This is actually easier than I've done other demos where I've had to bring a projector and project, like have a camera on me and then project onto a wall, which um, yeah. is hard. It, it's yeah. not. That's the way we were doing it before. Yeah. With, uh, you know, we had it in person, but then we had the projector. Yeah. And I could project onto the screen, a screen, yes. which we have, which was. Such a hassle. It, 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 and I was the only one who kind of could figure it out. So I handling the <laughs> demo and the attack was a little yeah, weird. even worse. Um, I'm gonna pull this garbage can close just because I go through a lot sure. of paper towels. But it's for I probably will make it to one dog if I'm lucky. <laughs> well, that's fine. It's all about the technique. It's yeah. not about finishing the painting. I'm like the slowest painter ever. It's just, I. Yeah. We are too both very hard to water I think jumping, yeah, jump this water flow too, but. Mm -hmm. Well, I bought a hair dryer to speed things along a little bit just so that I can not have to sit and wait for stuff to dry. Well, that's interesting. Are you getting anything? Yeah, it's recording Amy's demo right now. That fun for some reason. Say it again. It thinks it's recording. It's apparently uh, recording right now. Oh. Um. Recording in progress. 
Pause record. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this month's demonstration from the Society of West Coast Artists. My name is Jim Stinger. I am the president of the San Francisco chapter of the Society of West Coast Artists. And it is our pleasure today to have Amy Ratner doing our demonstration. She is a watercolorist and she is going to be doing pet portraits in watercolor. So I think without further ado, I will turn it over to her and let her introduce herself in a little more detail. So uh, take it away, Amy. Thanks, Jim. Um, so I am a water, actually I'm an artist who works in a little bit of everything, but um, I started in watercolor and um, I really started doing animals and pet portraits um, from, I would say probably 15 years ago now. And um, since then I've moved to, now I primarily paint in both watercolor and acrylic inks, which behave a lot like watercolor. Um, but I thought for today, one of the more useful things that I could kind of go through was pet portrait because they seem to be, um, we've all sort of gotten to know our pets better during the pandemic. And um, anyway, it's something I've been doing for a while. Uh, and as far as the demo goes, if you guys have questions, um, make sure you either type it in the chat or um, because my my sound isn't turned on. Um, so just make sure you let it be known that you have a question so I can answer it for you guys. Um, and I'm gonna be painting, um, I, typically a pet portrait takes me anywhere from four days to a week and a half. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna start a pet portrait. Um, I have a picture, you guys can see, of two of my dogs who have both since passed, but these are um, my two yellow labs. And um, so I'm probably gonna get through hopefully one of them. And I for sure wanna show you eyes and noses and um, stuff like that. Um, the other thing that I do strangely, I think in terms of watercolor is I sort of paint backwards. Um, I'm gonna start with a layer of I start with a layer of um, darks or shadows um, that kind of gives me a, um, it's like a value sketch that I do before I start laying in the local color. And um, it's just kind of how I think. And then once I do it, it kind of gives me a roadmap to the rest of the painting. Um, and so, I'm going to start, and because I know time is short, and I'm trying to get as much done as possible in, in this amount of time, but um, please do stop if you have questions. Um, oh, and if, if you guys want to see uh, other pet portraits that I've done, um, they're on my website, which is um, Amy Ratner with two T's art.com. So um, if you want to check that out and see some of the ones that I've done more do that. Um, okay, so I'm going to start. Um, I'm actually going to be painting uh, the lab on the right, my right. Um, and she sort of has more coloring in her, which is why I decided to start with her. And also I'm a lefty and I don't like to drag my hand <laughs> So painting right to left is, is another weird thing that I can try and do. So to start, um, I'm going to mix up um, the shadows. And my shadows for a yellow lab, um, those of you who do watercolor probably know that, um, that labs are have a lot of yellow and orange in them. And so if I were to lay down just um, shadows that were blue, it, it, you get kind of a green cast to, um, to the shadow, which is something that I don't want. Um, so you'll see me 
I'm mixing these up a lot. Right now I'm mixing up cobalt and a little bit of quinacridone coral, um, which is a really warm red. And um, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of yellow ochre, um, which kind of tones it down and gives it sort of a dusty feeling. So it's not quite so bright. Um, and so anytime you're working with yellows um, and watercolors, you're gonna wanna, um, if you're doing underpainting of any kind, you want to veer a little more into the red category than the blue category, just because, again, you don't want to end up with, with green shadows. So, um, so I'm going to be starting with Maisie here. And um, I just basically start by looking at, you know, bone structure and um, pretty much just the way you would do a, a normal value sketch on just about anything is kind of where, where I start. And, um, oh, and I just dragged something through Chloe's face. That's pretty. Let's <laughs> just clean the way up over here a little bit. Um, I just refilled my palette, so they're a little loose right now. And once again, being a left handed artist, I always end up with paint on my hands. So. Anyway, um, so this process actually takes a significant amount of time. And as far as brushes that I'm using, um, this is a Winsor Newton staple number seven. The larger one is a, um, it's another series seven by Winsor Newton. Um, this is a nine. And then um, the, this is Da Vinci, which is my new favorite pair of Maestro. Um, ones and this is a seven and they they really and then this one I think is Isabay and it's it's a little smaller it's probably like a five so um, I I'm a detailed person especially when it comes to portraits so um, I tend to kind of like to go a little bit smaller on my brushes when I'm working on faces and that's going to be my focus today is faces because that's the most important part of a pet portrait um, usually um, so you want to make sure that you get you know the planes of the face in there and, and kind of accurately get the shadows so i'm just kind of quickly trying to and some of these areas, and it's it's not necessarily bone structure that I'm working on. It's bone structure and just areas where it's if you were going to take a black and white photo of the source photo, and um, it's a value sketch basically, um, and it just really helps because then when you go and lay in your color, you already sort of have a map of where things go. Um, which is really helpful. And you'll, you'll sort of see how I do this as I go along, but um, there's a lot of laying color down and then kind of softening it. Um, and I'm gonna go fast just so I can get, <laughs> so I can get enough done. Um, And I also have a tendency to kind of go, I would love to be a complete Ala Puma painter um, in watercolor, but I'm definitely not. So I have a tendency to go back. And once I, especially once I put the color on over it, it, it changes. And I sort of try and always pay attention to, you know, the contrast and um, contrasts are sort of what tells your story the best. Um, and you just always wanna, you know, when you add one color, all of a sudden, you know, something that looked really dark can start to look, oh wait, I've, I've lost that edge or I've lost something that, you know, was an important part of telling the story. So um, I'm always kind of looking at it and going, okay, where, where do I need to add more? Um, which is why these portraits take me forever. So, 
Um, and I also kind of, you know, when people trust me to paint their pets, I, I try and really, you know, capture them as best I can and as accurately as I can, um, just because that's kind of the spirit of doing people's pets. It's kind of like doing a portrait of a person. Um, so I'm basically just trying to focus in on shadows and little areas that are going to help me tell the story of what the stock space looks like. Um, And even though this isn't really part of her bone structure, I mean, it is in that it's her nose, but um, just you'll see that once you get in and you start applying, you know, the yellows and the oranges, um, these colors really change and um, become a really helpful way to kind of tell you where the dog's face is. And I try the other really important thing with any pet portrait is um, one of the challenges to doing these. And I'm just going to talk. So if you, have, if you have questions, make sure that it's wave. And, um, but typically, a lot of times, what happens when someone asks you to do a portrait of their pet, uh, they'll send you a picture and you're sort of at the mercy, you know, you know, as an artist, you know that basically the, <laughs> the portrait's only gonna be as good as how much visual information you're getting from the picture. So I try and ask, um, you know, sometimes people have, you know, positive memory associated with a photo and so they really want that photo. And I always ask for a few photos um, so that I can really, when I'm drawing and drafting in the pets, um, I get, you know, as much visual information about the pet as I can before I, you know, go in to do the, the portrait. So, and then, you know, the drafting process is also something that, you know, is, is pretty important in all of it. You sort of have to have a pretty good idea of um, where you're going and, and uh, what's gonna. Um, so there's a shadow across her face that I am currently focusing on. Um, and it kind of, I don't know how well you guys can see the, the source, but I should have this up here. Um, so she's kind of in shadow, the um, right hand side of her face is in shadow. So that's going to be where I'm going to be putting the bulk of, of the color. And then, you know, even areas that are not technically shadow, but, you know, trying to get some of the wrinkles in her forehead and um, eyebrows are really important with. Um, with dogs because they say so much with their eyebrows. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's kind of their way of letting you know if they're with you or if they're not listening or whatever. So there's a lot of expression in them. So I tend to try and really get those if I can correct. Um, so anyway, if, if you know if you're doing a portrait. It's always a good idea to kind of, you know, let your client know that, um, you know, if, if the photo they submit isn't going to work or doesn't have enough information for you to do a really good portrait, um, it's important to kind of be honest with them um, in a really nice way um, so that you can kind of do the best uh, job you can do uh, and you have enough material to do that. It's also what I'm not kind of covering here is um, composition. 
which is another, um, you know, I have some clients that are very, very concerned with the background. Um, I just finished a piece that was for uh, someone's 50th wedding anniversary. And um, it turns out that the portrait was as much about the place as it was about the dog. So in that case, you know, my first inclination was to be like, oh, okay, this, you know, let's leave the lake out and just do the dog. But the more I talked to the client, the more I realized that this is a really special place. It's where they got married. And um, so sometimes, you know, you sort of have to weigh, um, but in general, um, for most of my portraits, I'm going to, you know, advise people to go with a more simple background um, that really lets the dogs shine. Um, if there's something that is, you know, really special about like a special blanket or something, then that's a great thing to include. Um, but, you know, if you have the dog as like a tiny little sort of footnote in the corner or a cat or horse or whatever, um, then it can kind of turn into something that's distracting. So um, it's, that's when, you know, your judgment as the artist kind of comes in and you have to kind of guide people to, you know, let them know what's going to be effective versus what's going to just sort of detract from it. Um, and the same is true of people portraits too. Of, you know, it's always going to be up. I mean, I always leave it up to the client, but <laughs> but I try and give good advice whenever possible. Um, and also knowing what I'm capable of and what I'm definitely not capable of is also very helpful. <laughs> So right now it kind of just looks like I'm, I'm doing a pink dog, but um, you'll kind of see uh, that this really ends up being helpful when you go to lay in all the, the colors over it. Um, Cause it kind of just, for me at least, it helps me know where I'm going. Um, and I think the reason that I started painting this way was because um, it clicked for me, watercolor clicked for me when my mentor, uh, Steve Curl, who gives classes at the Pacific Art League in Palo Alto, and I still take his classes, um, was doing a demonstration on day one. And he was showing us how, how, you know, how to paint a house in shadow and he laid down blue shadow and then he laid color over it and I was just amazed at um, what you know this magical medium where you you know you can layer one layer over another and still can see the layer underneath and it sort of helps inform and change the colors that go on top of it which is is part of the reason why I love I love the transparency of watercolor. Um, um, I am also an artist that I'm not a traditional watercolor artist in that I, I really don't have take issue with lifting, especially with um, these portraits. Um, there are just lifting is sort of part of the process and kind of taking out and then putting back in is kind of something that I do a lot. Um, so I've got a lot of the face in here. I'm just trying to get these back little shadows. And then I can move on to the body. And I apologize again, my left-handedness makes it kind of hard to see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and I can't count how many times I've just dragged my hand through which is why I have a hair dryer and we'll be <laughs> drying as we go because um, if it's wet, it just I can very easily just put my hand right in it. Um, let's see. So let me give her the nose and then. 
So then you can kind of see that the shadow goes off to her side over here. Um, and in the picture, it looks blue. And the blue is something that, as I've said before, I'm sort of substituting this, this kind of lavender, rose lavender color instead of blue, just because um, it works better with the colors that are on top. So, um, and I just kind of keep working in it and I want it to go in pretty, with a, a pretty good contrast between this side of her face and then the ruff that's around her neck. So um, that's, that's an area of high contrast in the photo. So I'm trying to kind of keep it that way. Um, and then it lightens up a little bit as you go out. Um, so just, and then it kind of, the shadows kind of fade as her body turns this direction. And and so again, if anybody has any questions, just holler because I'm happy to answer anything or explain why I'm doing this weird pink dog. <laughs> She has some of the folds here, so I'm trying to kind of capture that. Um, and I'm definitely a very, typically a very slow painter. I don't paint super fast. Um, although the longer I've been doing this, the more I realize that I tend to get better results if I don't allow myself too long to sort of fuss over what I'm doing. Um, so if I, if I kind of force myself to go a little faster than I'm comfortable with, I tend to, it helps keep, keep the painting fresh and um, spontaneous and kind of, you know, keeps me from overworking it because I definitely have, I, a graphic design background and um, graphic design, a lot of it is in the details. And so <laughs> art has been a process for me. I'm sort of learning to kind of let go of some of that control and, you know, learning to sort of celebrate the irregularities that happen. Um, and that, that didn't happen right away. That kind of, it took me a while to kind of get to that point where I, you know, really like when you can see the, the brush strokes. Um, and I like when, you know, evidence of the artist is appears in the piece. Um, when I first started out, I was, I was a much more careful and I guess timid is the right word. Um, painter. Um, and as time has gone on and I've done more of these, I realized that, oh, you know, and taking workshops from different artists um, and sort of listening to, to my own taste in art. I, I actually like when you can kind of see that the, the, it's a painted piece, it's not a photograph. And um, as Steve sort of says quite often, um, you know, your job is to suggest something, not to kind of, you know, you don't have to come up with a, a, a photographic, you know, reproduction of it. This is, you know, your interpretation of it, um, just kind of the beauty of art. So, um, but for someone like me, it took, it has taken and it's still a work in progress. Um, a long time for me to kind of get comfortable with, you know, not being super controlling about everything that goes down on the page. Um, I'm just trying to get her color. And I'm not 
really changing the, um, the, the darks based on, you know, there definitely are some darks in here that are more pink and then there are some that are more blue. Um, but for the time being, I'm just kind of trying to get a, a fast, um, just sort of value sketch in at this point. Um, and then I, I definitely go back to these and fine tune them as the portrait progresses. Um, and then, you know, if you've got kind of the other thing with doing animals, like if you've got fur, you know, I'm always softening edges because it's fur and it, you know, does sort of like a soft edge, but it's not absolutely essential to have every edge be soft. And the other thing about when you're, it, I do a lot of labs because that's just, it, obviously they're a really popular breed and, um, you know, I've done them a lot in the past. Um, in yellow labs in particular, I have a tendency to overpaint because I feel like I, they should be requiring more than they do. Um, they, you know, once you get this part in um, you, and you lay down the color over it, a lot of times, you know, when you add the black around the eyes and the black and the nose, all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, yeah, actually um, it's more done than I realized. Um, and then it just becomes a matter of kind of fine tuning it and getting everything you know, the way you really want it, but, um, okay. So right now, I'm going to just give it a quick look. <laughs> <laughs> kind of test with the back of my hand to keep the oils in my fingers from getting on the page. Um, okay, so at this point, I usually just do one more pass with a slightly darker version um, so I can get the really, you know, darker parts. Yeah. Did you say what colors you were using? Yeah, these are... Um, so I've been working with cobalt, um, and this is quinacridone coral. Uh, they're, the cobalt is by core. Um, it's, I actually prefer cobalt from like a Daniel Smith, but that's all I have right now. But, um, and then the quinacridone coral is a Daniel Smith, and um, yellow ochre is the other one that I, I kind of put in. It gives everything sort of a a dusty feel as opposed to like a really bright saturated feel. Um, and I just added a tiny bit of ultramarine in there to get a little, to give it a little bit more dark. Um, and I'm just gonna go in and put these on any areas where it's, it's really, you know, crucial to have like that contrast um, going in. And 
some areas I sort of decide to get that contrast to independently of the photo, just, you know, because I know that it'll help. And again, I mean, it feels redundant, but I will definitely be going back over these. Um, and it, so it's, you know, for me, it's kind of a layering process. Darken up her nose and her mouth. And for me, I mean, I guess I would say it's always a process of just sort of looking at what you've got and where the areas of high contrast are. And if they're corresponding to where you want them to be, then that's great. And if they're not, then, you know, I, I just sort of give it a little more and, and kind of work it a little bit. Um, so she, she, they both of these girls have these distinctive dark areas under their eyes, um, which is kind of a lab thing. Um, but it also kind of follows their eye socket. So that helps with the bone structure too. And then um, in the ears, I'm gonna give a little bit more shadows in there because watercolor is doing, you know, known for, just put my hand here, but watercolor has this tendency to, to dry on you and then you look at it and you go, wait a minute, that doesn't look like how I laid it down. Um, and that's because it dries about 10 to 15% lighter than it looks when you lay it down. And so I'm just gonna go in here and, you know, give her, her rough around her neck a little more contrast here. Um, and then just, you know, get this some edging, which I tried to do when it was wet and it just sort of faded away, so. And with the fur, I, I always kind of try and go over it to, like I said, soften it. So, you know, there are some areas where you can do hard edges, but as a rule, I tend to kind of soften the fur as much as I can. Um, and then there's another one right where these two. Um, I think Chloe has her, her legs slightly over Maisie, so she just kind of want to draw that distinction there. Okay, so that's kind of where, oh, where else? Um, so there's also like a shadow going down. This is her leg that's kind of tucked behind her. And right here, this shadow that's on her leg is gonna help delineate the top of her ear. So that's that's an important shadow to include. So you get you know, what's going on with her ear up here, which is lighter. Um, so let me just kind of fade that down as it curves down. Um, okay, so again, I'm gonna blast it because I'm, next time I'm gonna mess up. Um, so I'm going to actually leave some of my, um, leave my shadow palette or the shadow that I've mixed on my palette. I tend to have to clean my palette a lot because it's tiny and I don't know why I haven't decided to just go for a bigger palette. Um, oh, and the core cobalt also runs like crazy, which like, makes it not super fun for these palettes, because um, then you sort of have to contend with blue merging into absolutely everything. So that's why I tend to like Daniel Smith better. Um, so for the for the fur, I'm also gonna switch my waters because. I want some clean water for her. 
So to mix the fur, I think the, the first thing I start with is this color, which is, um, I believe it's Holbein, and it's called uh, Jean Brilliant, which number one. <laughs> and it's, it's the best yellow that I've found for yellow labs um, because, you know, there are parts of these dogs that are pretty close to white and yet, you know, there's still this kind of creamy yellow feel to them. So that's why I start with the lightest color and it's actually kind of just a wash that I do over almost everywhere except um, places on her face that um, her body where there's real bright white. Um, but down here, pretty much everywhere is, um, there's no bright white glare hitting her. So I'm just gonna go in and give this some color and I, I'll be going over it with a little more reddish. But for now, uh, it kind of just lays it all in um, the edge of her, the edge of her leg right there is a little um, on the white side, so I'm going to leave that edge a little bit. Um, not put the, the yellow on there. But then when you get up here, um, again, it's it's a pretty, pretty yellow. So then soften that one there. And I even actually do it, you know, on the body um, because I, I like having this sort of mellow, I don't know what you call it, like a yellowy, off-white yellow underneath everything. Um, it's just kind of warms everything up and gives it a nice warmth to it, um, which is another reason why the shadows um, I, I add that red into the shadows because much like a, a human portrait, um, it's sort of got a tendency to go a little too blue or cool in color. And when you do that, you can end up with um, just sort of a, a dead looking dog. <laughs> um, I've done it so many times where I, I went too blue on my underpainting and then I'm, I'm constantly going back to warm it up again because um, it's just, you know, that that little bit of color really adds, you know, of warmth, adds a lot of life to the subject. Um, it's really helpful. So I'm just gonna kind of leave her eyebrows um, with their, they've got some of the, there's some of the whitest, areas in this. So I'm going to leave her, her two eyebrows um, white and then her nose obviously has a lot of color on it. And then um, there's some areas. The other thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and add color and if I go back and go, oh, you know, that's that's a hot spot and I need to pull that out, I'll, I will go ahead and lift it. Um, it's It's and I'm looking here and seeing that I need another shadow right by her eye. But this is kind of the area where she's getting hit by the light. So this is where I'm kind of trying to keep the, the whites if I can. Um, and if I, if I cover them up, I'll just lift them out a little bit bigger, which isn't really a problem. And I can show you the brushes that I use for that because um, I don't use, if I do have to lift, I, I don't use your typical scrubber brush that um, you can buy in an art store. Um, I use a different kind of brush, which is a lot easier on the paper and um, still does a pretty good job of picking the paint up. Um, so I'll just go ahead and give her, this just gives another undertone of yellow to her back, even though as you can see, her back has a lot of like reddish orange in it. Um, and part of it's just the light that this photo was taken in. It was taken in really warm light. 
which kind of gives her for that a little more of a reddish cast than like if she were outside in the daylight. Um, so now that we've kind of got her, that first layer in, um, I'm gonna clear some other little spot here. And now is when I mix up um, a few different shades of what's going on in her coat. Um, sorry, now I have paint all over my hands, which is not good. Um, so I kind of tend to go from, you know, light to dark and when I'm looking at the, the values and um, how to make, sorry, how to make these things really sing. Um, so this color, which is called, is a Daniel Smith and it's called light red, um, is a really good place to start. And then when you combine it with yellow ochre, um, you, you get pretty, you get something pretty close to um, what's going on in the coat. Uh, I tend to add a little tiny bit of orange. Um, this is a really transparent orange, and I have to look up the name of it. It's it's a special tube that I heard about in that workshop. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like finding the balance between red and orange and yellow um, to make these these lab colors. Um, so that's going to be sort of my mid range, and then I have this is Naples yellow, um, which I'm going to combine that with the light red, and that will give me out of the new Naples that is a different brand. So I'm going to actually bring in some of this Jean Bouillon over here to kind of light it up. Um, so that's kind of a, a mid-range value in her fur. And, um, and then there's darks, like the one that you see in her ears. And that one, um, I'll start again with the light red. And um, I'll go in and add a little bit of uh, brown matter, which is a really red, it's not actually a red, it's not a brown. Um, and then again, add some of the yellow ochre to that, and a little bit of the cobalt. And that gives you like kind of a, a reddish, darker reddish brown, which um, let's get for her ears. And then I don't think it still needs a little more orange. So. So those are sort of the three values that I see in, in her fur. And um, I'm gonna start on her face because I wanna make sure that I get to do some eyes for you guys. Um, so I'm just gonna start in the middle of this kind of light brown that she has going on on her forehead. Um, and kind of bring it down over here. Um, and this is kind of mid-range a little bit. It's really clean. And I'm switching to a slightly small brush. Okay. So, and then you can kind of see how this color kind of curves over her eyebrow and comes up here and kind of has this, you know, center location on her forehead. So I'm trying to kind of capture that. And then there's that really dark spot right in the middle of her forehead. So that, and then I just grab a little more light red. And then Get it a little deeper. And light red is actually a really good color for that. So just gonna kind of give her that little spot in the center of her forehead. And um, 
I think over here, this is looking a little too flesh tone for me. Let me see what I'm going to so, like under these shadows, right under her eyes, um, I, I want to go in and add some more of the yellows there, and the yellows here. Um, and then on the and then kind of coming into the white around her nozzle, which I will leave alone. Um, I just want to make sure I'm always keeping an eye on her, her eyebrows. Um, and then over here, you can kind of see this area um, right below her eye socket. It's in shadow, so it's, it's like a white in shadow, but once you add that yellow on top of the, the background color, um, you kind of get what that looks like. Um, and I tend to kind of follow, this is how the, the, the underpainting is sort of my map because in places where I put that painting, I can see, okay, this is where my eye saw, you know, things changing. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of this to her muzzle. Um, and then on her nose, there's, uh, this is, I'm gonna start with this middle value, but it's definitely gonna go into the darker value. And this is an area where I might, if I have time at the end, um, I would go in and put maybe a layer of like a really light wash of cobalt blue over that to kind of blue it out a little bit. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna kind of lay this in. And that kind of gives us a sense of her nose. And, and then I'll probably grab just a little bit of the darker value and put it at the top of her, where her nose starts. Um, and then, as you can see, the, the bright spot in the middle of her forehead has already started to fade. So um, I'm going to go back in and darken that a little bit. Um, because that's kind of a distinguishing feature. And it also kind of helps show you where her expression is coming from up there. So after working with acrylic inks, um, <laughs> going back to watercolor, I'm, I'm, I'm still consistently surprised at like how light they dry because I'm getting used to acrylics, which actually dry darker. So <laughs> it's kind of a change in the process. Um, so we've gotten kind of up here and just kind of softening some of these colors. Um, and looking at what we have, um, a little bit of this yellow over here, you know, in, in this area. A lot of it is just kind of looking at where you need to add color like her inner ear here on this, this the area of the ear that's kind of flipping out. Um, I'm gonna go in and lay that in. Um, and then be careful when I add the other side of it because there's a, a highlight running down there. Um, and this side has a little more here. Um, so kind of, so you can kind of see right here, there's a bone that sticks out right here and her eye socket kind of is coming out here and then there's a highlight right there. So that's what I'm trying to kind of go after, um, putting this yellow over it, uh, but still leaving a little bit of that highlight on the side. So you get, that just gives you again, an idea of like sort of how her bones are coming into play there in the planes of her face. Um, okay. So I am gonna just, these are the brushes that I use um, when I need to soften lines or lift. And they are University Bright series by Windsor Newton. And 
I think you can get them in any art store. They're super common. And they're just, for me, they're a lifesaver because if I need to go in and soften an edge, I just get it a little wet and it doesn't, you know, wreck the paper. It, um, it just kind of softens. If I go over and over and over, and believe me, I have, um, I can wreck the paper for sure. But um, if you're careful with it, it, it's actually a pretty forgiving brush if you need to lift something out. Um, so I'm going to, right now, I'm going to start on my ears. And um, see, so we've got the dark darks going over here. Added a little more red to that. And I'm going to just go ahead and start laying that in. And it's coming in. This is really for the, the darker spots. And then for the rest of the ear, I'm going back to my light red. A little bit of yellow ochre. And then I'll come in and kind of. Um, on top of it and let it just sort of blend. And you can see her ear kind of gets lighter as it gets to the top of the ear. So, uh, and then, then I kind of curve around. And this is another area where at the end, if I have time, I'll go back and, and add like a really faint cobalt blue wash on top of it to kind of. Um, fade that out a little bit, but right now, for right now, I'm just trying to get all the colors in. So and then I'll grab a little bit of the yellow paint off here and just let it kind of all blend together. Um, and that's all, you know, you can kind of pull up. And again, I mean, I'm gonna need to go back in there probably fool with it a little more. And this is where I should have really started on the right ear because <laughs> my hand is gonna dry right through it. Um, so this is, again, the, the darkest spots in the ear on the side, um, which is kind of this triangular area. Um, going back to... And this has a really kind of more faded side to it, but for now, I'm just gonna kind of leave that um, a little highlight that you can see on the very edge of her ear. I'm trying to kind of keep that intact. And um, then I'm gonna and just sort of blend it in. And it gets really white on the very top of the ear, so I'm trying to kind of keep those highlights in there. Um, and again, you can, I mean, you can kind of see if I were doing this really uh, at my normal pace, I would do this with really clean water, but for the time being, it's working just fine. Um, Would you like me to replace the water? Um, if you don't mind, <laughs> just one of them is fine. I should be okay. Thank you. I, it's not absolutely essential, but that's okay. Thank you. Um, and if you want to take a break, at some point, you're back. Up. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I want to make sure that I get to the eyes because those are really important when you're doing portraits. Um, so I haven't really, I, I'm adding a little yellow under these eye sockets, which will then get another coat of something darker, but um, I'm just adding those in right now. And trying to kind of cover some of these um, areas with yellow, because um, it's, we're not really, Make sure we get all of that. So, okay, so then I'm gonna block, thank you. I'm gonna block in the body really fast while we're still, while we've got all of these colors mixed up. And um, for her rug, goes around in there. Um, I'm gonna just start with kind of a mellow color here, but it's, it's gonna need to go darker because it's in shadow. Um, I need it to contrast with the face. So um, start with 
some of the lightest colors there and there, and then I'll drop in some of the darker ones. Um, so I've got kind of a medium color going on, and then I'm going to take a finer brush, smaller brush, and go in with some of the darker areas over here and just kind of get. You know, it's pretty wet right now, so this may not, it, it may not take, but um, just kind of giving it, it a little structure so you know that it's, this is kind of the part of her, her coat that's a little more furry. Um, and then on this side, you just sort of have a, a pale yellow going on here. So again, I'm going to grab some maples and just kind of mix that in and bring that in here. Because again, it's it's darker than her face, and you really want her face to pop. Um, so um, I'm trying to be cognizant of that. And then you have this sort of part of her shoulder that's in shadow and for that part again i'm just going to go in with this yellow a little bit darker yellow um, and that should suffice for that area because um, you've already done your your darks um, and then come through and kind of give give it structure um, and same over here i'm gonna just kind of come in here with some of these yellows. This needs a little more definition on this leg, which I already know that. Um, right now, just give that bone a little chance to peek out right there. Um, this is a little, this line right here needs to be softened. So I'm just going in and softening it a little bit right here. And she has some, the tips of her legs are getting a little more of this reddish color. So I'm going to add some of that, just, the, just a little bit of it to show that she's got that going on with the ends of her legs. Um, Okay, and so now we are moving on to her body. And um, what I was kind of grabbing me is this area, which is pretty yellow. It's, it might be kind of hard to see, uh, but it's got quite a bit of yellow in it. And so I'm going to dive in this Naples yellow and coming in with some of that and then maybe adding a little bit of it up here to kind of blend with that red. And then you've got um, right below it, this is where the body goes back. And so this is this part of the body and it's it's under her rub. So um, go around and add that and then Again, I'm trying to pay attention to the contrast between the edge of her ear and her body. And so that means that I'm going to go in and so the ear here is darker than what's behind it, but then pretty much everywhere else it's going to be, um, the body's going to be darker. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of this brown matter and light red, um, mix a lot of the light red in there, and some orange, just transparent orange, and then, oh, that's really orange, and then some of the yellow ochre. Um, and that's looking still too orange to me, so maybe I'll add some of this. I don't know, maybe it's a little too good. Um, again, it's just kind of mixing until you see the right color coming out. So here we've got kind of a good color for her 
And then you also have those maples that you're going to drop in in the areas of life. So, I'm back. I'm going to start on the edge of your ear. Um, okay, bring it down. And this is the area that I want to be most careful with. So I'm going to try and like put it all in. And then I'm going to drop in the lighter areas after I get all of this in there and let them kind of find their own way in. Um, and so for now, I'm not paying a lot of attention to what's going on on our back. I'm just trying to get this color in. Um, and, and it kind of gets lighter as it goes towards the belly on this side. So I'm going to just grab some water and lighten it up a little bit down here. And then for those areas where there's some lights in their coat. I'm just going to go back in and pop those in here and then some here and then lots of some going in here. And then you've got some of this red coming back up over her um, leg. And that's another area where it's bleeding into her hair. So, so that's all I'm going to do for the back for right now. Um, that's another thing that is probably going to get tinkered with a little later. And you can kind of see on the very edge that there's, there's some yellow coming on on top here. And we'll bring that down with the blue, even though it's really blue in the picture. So now I'm going to go ahead and blow dry that so I don't dry my hand. Um, and Doing that, I noticed that this area needs to be kind of, I just need to soften, um, soften all of these places. Um, and there's, you know, this is where these portraits take me a lot longer. Um, because I will go back and just fine tune for quite a while. Um, and that's when the details really become more important. Um, so I'm noticing like the edge of her hair, which I didn't paint. I'm going to bring a little bit of that maples in right there. Um, and that edge we've got. And we give this ear over here a little more. Color, um, just to kind of, because it frames her face, and so it's really handy to kind of get that little punch. Um, so now I am going to um, move the head with the eyes and the nose. I'm just adding some of those details here that are peeking out at me. Um, just areas of shadow that I'm noticing that aren't as highlighted as I'd like. Um, okay, but in the interest of time, I'm going to go and move on to the eyes and the nose, which means that I'm going to 
clean my palette off a little bit. Um, just because it's so many new set of colors here. So when I do um, eyes, I have kind of found that um, I, I tend to depart from, eyes are where I most depart from the photograph. And that's because um, a lot of times when you look at photographs of dogs, um, particularly, particularly labs who have the really dark eyes against the really light fur, um, with these labs, um, you still need light in the eyes and, and the light in the eyes is what's gonna give it life. And so I paint for the most part uh, eyes. I don't stay as true to, like if you look at this photograph, her eyes are black basically. You, can, you can't really see any color in there. And instead I'm gonna give her, um, partly because I know her, she was my dog and she didn't have black eyes, but they just aren't showing up in this photo. So again, I'm going back to the brown matter, which is basically red, um, and adding some burnt sienna in there. And again, um, some of this, some of this, um, I believe that's Indian yellow. And it's the golden color um, that really actually has life. And I remember the first time I painted in a dog, or I can't think of it, it was a dog. And Steve was like, oh, you gotta add some gold into the eyes. And I'm like, but the dog has no gold in its eyes. Why would I do that? And he's like, just trust me. And it really did add a lot of depth um, because the eyes are, are these sort of round spheres and um, the, the light in reality, the light shines through them. And so it, it actually makes sense. And, and we see, when we see light in the eyes, then it, it kind of gives them, you know, just a more alive feeling than if you were just going to go and do completely black eyes. So um, I'm just going to, so what I'm mixing right now, I'm mixing up um, a little bit more of the brown matter. Um, to give it a little bit of that sort of reddish feel. And then the darker, it's basically I'm taking the brown matter and a little yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt sienna um, for the brown. And um, then I add a little, I'm just gonna, um, and I added a little bit of this Indian yellow to bring it into this brown. And then I added a little bit of ultramarine to give it this dark, to kind of get, get myself a dark version of it. So, so this is for the actual eye. Um, and I'm gonna start on this one and um, kind of just go around where the pupil is. I think it must have been a pretty, I must have taken this but on with very low light because their pupils are really huge in this. Um, and I actually usually just, uh, start using a smaller brush at this point. Um, and I first I just get those irises in um, and you want them to be dark but then it's also a gradient. So I'm gonna add those and then, and then while it's still wet, grab some of your Indian yellow. I just kind of put it at the bottom and drop a little of it in. And um, I could tell already the one on the right didn't have enough paint on it. But, that just little hint of gold is gonna really add a lot of life to the eyes. Um, and then I go and I grab the darker version that I've mixed up here um, and put that sort of at the very top of the eye. 
um, because there's usually a shadow coming over the eye from the eyelid. And so the eye kind of gets lighter as it goes down. Um, and again, eyes, eyes are one of these strange things that I will work on and I'll subtract and I'll add and I'll do it. And it's all sort of by gut. <laughs> And it's like, I know it when I see it. And when it's not right, I know that too, but I, a lot of times I can't explain why. Um, and then you dry these, so you can go ahead on to the outline of your eyes and the people. Um, and it's kind of amazing to me, these eyes look really pretty dark at this point, but once you add the black, or so I'm mixing up the black for the people right now. And to do that, I use Payne's Gray, and I'm gonna put to just warm it up a little bit, grab again a little of the brown method, and mix it in with the Payne's Gray. And so you don't have such a sort of you have a little bit of warmth to the black, which is nice. Um, and then grab a little bit of the ultramarine and it, you sort of end up with that violet color again in the darks, which is nice. So this is what I'm gonna use for the outline of her eyes. Um, and as I'm looking at them, they're pretty dark. So this is where you really wanna go dark. So I'm adding a lot more paint spray, and I don't add as much water. I kind of try and keep the paint a thick, thicker consistency, and I'm using a pretty tiny brush. Um, this is an Escoda number two. So this is where I want to get the lines that go, you know, that line her eye um, that are so, so distinctive for this breed. Um, so I'm going to go down here and she has the, this kind of lid that comes down like this and hers are pretty dark, her, her lids are pretty dark. Chloe's have some light to them or whatever, Maisie's are dark. Um, and then she's got these you know, little areas of her eye that kind of come out on the side and come down drooly eyes. And I'm just going to add a little water here so that you get this kind of smudged effect. These dogs kind of look like they forgot to take their eye makeup off. Um, and that kind of gives you that sort of charcoal effect. Um, and little things like she has a little, um, little flip of black that comes up here. And then I'm going to make this a tiny bit thicker because we're going to be adding her um, eyelashes in there. And so I'm going to do other side, her eyes. And then this, this eye is a little bit, not quite as big because it's farther away from us. Um, and then I'm going to get the corner as it comes down. I'm just going to, this is the kind of stuff that I tend to try and draw out when I am drafting so that I don't have to worry about it when I'm painting. Um, and these little areas of the back, and then, and then I'm going to Again, just sort of smudge it, bring it down, smudge it up here, and make it a little bit more. And this is where, you know, it becomes kind of a, a detail thing, you know, you sort of have to kind of, this is where the details matter is in the eyes. I would say that they're probably the most important detail in in your portrait. Um, it's the first thing people look at. 
um, for obvious reasons. Um, and that's true of a, a human portrait too. Um, and I'm gonna dry those because I'm gonna do the people. Get them nice and dry. Okay, so for the pupils, this is where this is where I tend to kind of I've been known to like put a pupil in and then completely remove it because I wasn't happy with where I put the light. So this is where I, I tend to add the light reflection is in the actual pupil itself. And I find that a reliable place to put the light, and, and you'll see that when you add the light, um, the highlight, it kind of gives you an indication of where the dog is looking. So, um, and I tend to try and soften it a little bit as much as I can, that highlight. Um, I used to not worry about this, but I have found that, you know, highlights and eyes tend not to be, have those hard edges all the time. And they can sometimes look a little too cartoony. So, I like to soften the highlights a little bit. And then with the bottom of the pupil, I'll pull out just a little bit um, so that you, you know, you really get, it's all about conveying that this is an orb and not just, you know, um, a pupil that's sitting in there. Last that before I lose my mind. So. And for this one, I am going to lift a little bit out of this highlight and um, then I'm going to do. Then I tend to go back into the center and really darken it. Um, it's the, it really, it, it comes down to the contrast in this pupil that kind of lets the, the viewer know that the dog is, is alive and, you know, has this great spirit. Um, so I'm gonna go with leaving the highlight in the same spot. Um, in this eye. And sometimes when I'm drafting, I will actually go in and make a you know, I'll I'll use pencil to draft in where I'm gonna put these highlight spots. Um, just so that you know I know going in before I paint the pupil. Um, and so I've, I've grabbed it, I've lightened a little bit on that side, I've lightened a little bit on that side, and I've blasted and then stuck on the other side. Get it again, a lot of darkness in the middle to really give a sense of. And then what you'll notice is all of a sudden the area in the um, iris becomes a lot lighter. So this is when I go back in and add a little more color in this area. Um, I'm leaving that golden area to kind of still show up um, so that you know you have you still have that light under the pupil. Um, and then on top of it, um, I go in and I'll, I'll remember and give a bit of top a little more shadow. And actually that shadow can kind of come across 
the top of the eye because it's being cast by the top of the eye. So you kind of come up here and you end up with the shadow of the eye like over. Um, and I would say um, and I'm going to go in and soften. I'm going to try to zoom it a bit. And soften some of this area too. And this little area right here is bothering me. It's kind of too dark. It's kind of coming close together. So. Now again, you just really want your eyes to look like orbs um, as much as possible. Um, and so I'm thinking, and it, a lot of it is just gut, like a lot of it is looking at this and going, okay, does that really look natural or does it look like something's messed up with the eyes? And I, I have a habit of spending a long time on my eyes. So I'm gonna not do that, <laughs> but um, that's kind of the general idea. And um, then I have a little trick for the eyelashes. And then blonde eyelashes. Um, let me just. Oh, wow. I'm it. And then we moved it, and then it comes in. It's okay. We we'll just need to figure out how to do that. <laughs> So when you have blonde eyelashes, a lot of times when there's something really light um, with watercolor, you, you use the white of the paper, which is always a great and usually the best option. But when it, I find when it's something like eyelashes, it really messes me up to try and um, deal with those lights by not painting them because it just gets really difficult. Right now, I'm looking for my white pencil. There it is. So, I have these watercolor pencils. Um, they're made by different people. This one's uh, Faber Castle. This one's Jordan. And this one's a little off white, um, which is kind of more the color of her lashes. So, these make what you want to do is you want to make sure they're super sharp um, before you go ahead and do them. But the great thing about watercolor pencils, and they work, I use them for um, everything from whiskers, if I'm doing an animal that has whiskers, um, that are light, um, to eyelashes, to whatever. And, and what's nice about them is if you hate what you've done with them, they are water soluble. So you can go back and lift them out. Um, with a wet brush, and that works pretty well. So here I see her eyelashes kind of come across. They start about here, and they come over here. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give her this little eyelash area, and then on this one, it kind of comes over here and down sort of her eye. And um, then you, once I've got those in, I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of black and just kind of clean them up. This one, I think it's too much. So I'm gonna lift a little bit of that out. Um, and as you can see above her eye, there's like a little bit of black. And you can kind of give her those eyelash. And I also feel like she needs, we need to even go darker on her the edge of her eyes. And so over here again, there's just a little black above the lash line. And go down here. I'm gonna add more down to here and even add some more to her pupil because honestly you know your pupils can't be too dark. Um, 
especially in their contrasting mode. So just to highlight mark that we've got going on there. Um, really sometimes go and cover up over at the bottom, highlight a little bit because it's not meant to be quite as bright as the, the one above. And then this white, this white pencil um, comes in really handy if you know you want to go back in and kind of really punch in lights in the eyes. So we've got our eyes in mostly and um, I would still darken up in the edges a little more, but now I'm gonna leave it. And I'm gonna mix up the colors for her nose. Um, so she's got a pink nose. What happens a lot of times with labs is they start out with black noses and then they end up with pink spotted noses. <laughs> and she has a typical lab nose. Oh my gosh, she's yellow. I found it in my bag because I didn't have any and it's not Daniel's <laughs> again. It's not behaving in any way. So anyway, this is the Quinacridone Pole. And um, oh, thank you. Um, and I'm trying to get the pink of her nose, and I'm going to use a little bit of opera here. And we've already got a lot of dark that we mixed up for the eye edges, and we've got our highlights that we put in. So what I'm going to do is, so this is opera, quinacridone coral, and I'm not going to touch yellow kind of um, Maybe a little bit of blue, because it's not quite so warm. So I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt here and just tone it down a little bit. Thank you. Um, so, okay. So this is kind of the color that I'm working with for her nose. And um, I'm going in with pink first. And I'm going to just kind of do the whole thing in this pink. And then I'll go in with the dark and then add that in. Um, and again, you can kind of see this line that I dropped it in is sort of where the plane changes. And it goes from, that's where it curves over the edge. Um, dog noses can be, uh, they can be really easy sometimes, and other times they can be really frustrating, <laughs> um, depending on what's going on with the nose. Um, so that's kind of the base color. And then I've got these darks that I've already used up for. The eye and it's looking a little bluer, and so I'm grabbing a little in dampen blue, which is a super dark, dark, dark blue um, that I like. Um, and there's a little Elizabeth crimson in there, and I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. Um, just it's it's right around her edges. Curls in. Gonna give her this little nostril here. Um, and in this nostril kind of curves. You can kind of see the interior of the nostril. And then it does it and then it comes back out. So Again, this is wet on wet, so I'm going to go in and get a little more direction after this is dry. And then her edges of her nose are dark, so I am going to be adding that. And then I'm going to kind of curves in here and just kind of give her a And then this black kind of comes all the way up and it's also a result of the, the nose kind of curving down. Um, um, and then 
and it gets lighter. You can kind of see like the very top of her nose is lighter and then it kind of comes down. So I'm gonna give it a little more pink right about here. Maybe more of that pink. And I will also be doing a little hot spot right at the very top. Um, so I'm gonna dry those. So I'm going to take a little bit smaller brush on my and come in with more of the dark to get the real shape of the nostril. And one thing about noses is if you realize that the pink kind of goes into the nostril, which is why I sort of do them all in pink, because in reality, these pink parts of the nose are actually inside the nostril. So it's just a matter of, you know, making the shadows where they need to be. And um, again, she has this really dark edge. And it gets darker over here. And then you know, it depends what you want. And I'm always gonna be you know, blending. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of this brown matter and some blue blue. Um, to kind of give me this purple that's going on underneath the nose. More of it. So yeah, that's kind of what I want to do here. Um, and then it kind of moves up into this pinker area. And then on the top up here, it really goes into more of the um, more of this kind of blue. So you've got that plain change going on in there. And then as you kind of go, and she does still have some speckles on her nose and painting a portrait for someone. And that's the kind of thing that you really do want to pay attention to, like any special markings on the other side, sorry, you know, different colored eyes, or whatever, um, because that's what makes the pet unique. And so that's what the owners are really going to be looking for when they look at the portrait. Um, again, I'm just darkening the, the tops of the eyes to kind of give it a little more drama going on up there. Um, so I'm going to put this again, and then I'm going to lighten. Speckles. Got some speckles going on. Okay, let me know if, I, if we've hit time because I like to stop. Um, okay, so then for the nose, I'm going to give her, um, and I'm using green water for this, a, a hot spot right about here. Because um, noses are usually where you're going to get a hot spot. Um, so just lift a little of that out. Later on, I'll, I'll, if we have time, I'll add a little blue to that. But I want to get her mouth area in really fast. So here we've got this dark little area that is pretty typical. 
Um, and the nose is kind of encroached on it, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So down here, she's got the typical kind of dark area around her mouth. And then that dark kind of extends into our muzzle and down here she's got kind of that. So. Yeah. And then soften it a little bit. And um, keep darkening it. And you can barely see, she kind of, you know, and you're kind of looking at her from above. So her mouth is going to be smaller than it would be if you had a photograph of her kind of straight on. Um, you can kind of just see the very tip of her lip below this. Um, because you're kind of looking at her going down this direction. Um, but it's important to get that kind of, you know, darkness. So you can kind of see So now I'm going to add the dark of her mouth for just that little lip there. Um, going in. And give it a couple coats because I'm going to make this. As you can see, I'm not adding a lot of water here because this is like, you just really want a lot of paint going on right here. Um, and then if you want, you can add, you can take a, a brush and sort of add, when I add these little polka dots that are where the whiskers come out of, I tend to get it wet first and sort of just kind of drop it in and then pop these little things in and then you kind of, you just blot them because you don't want a polka dot at the muzzle, you just want to hint at those little areas where the whiskers would be. Um, so now we've got you know, the essential components in for her portrait. And what, you, what I would do now um, is I would go in and fine tune and you know, time with the amount of time that we have or don't have. But like, for example, I would put in my palette again. And how are we for time? Yeah, about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay, good. So um, unless, and if anybody has questions, let me know because I'm happy to answer. And I went kind of fast um, because I was trying to get the whole thing done. Um, yeah. But, um, so in terms of fine tuning, this is where I go and I soften edges and I add extra um, darks, any darks that need tweaking. Um, like I would say that the, the shadows by her ears need to be a lot darker. And so I'm gonna mix up some dark uh, shadow color with the ultramarine, a little of the clinacridone and a little of the um, so it's our same our same sort of mixture that we used for the rest of our um, for the rest of our shadows, just a little bit darker, because um, you you do want it to kind of impact and show up. So this is kind of like a gray, um, and with the yellow, the the yellow ochre, the quinacridone, and the cobalt, or the ultramarine. Wait, I just really have this paint on in my hand. Um, it's it's you know creating gray basically from your three primaries, which is essentially what you're doing. But I always have sort of learned that in watercolor, when you're going to mix a gray, it's it's better to mix it from three colors as opposed to just select like a paint gray like for her eyes or her nose, um, because it it's a little more interesting if you even if you're going to use paint gray, which is totally fine. Um, add some some color to it because typically um, if you're going to use just plain black in a um, in a piece 
the eyes, it, it, it can deaden it if you aren't careful. So you want to, um, you want to be careful with, with blacks and darks and try and like give them color inside of them um, by mixing them from, you know, colors that when they come together, they make gray or black. Um, and that's, that's another reason why, you know, instead of just going in with like a paints gray for some of these shadows that look gray, it's more effective to go in and kind of mix like a lavender or something because then you don't end up with these sort of a lot of gray. I, I sort of reserve my paints for the eyes and the nose because those are, you know, where you want the viewer's focus to go first and foremost. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give just again, another little hit to these, um, this uh, orbital little bone area here um, without making her look like she's got insomnia. <laughs> um, hopefully. Um, just to kind of emphasize any areas that need it. Um, and as far as the body is concerned, I really sort of, especially with this one, I think I took it on portrait mode and it, it blurred the background for me. And I kind of like that about it because, you know, as far as this portrait is concerned, um, I really wanted to just really zero in on the face. Um, and I'm mixing just some more of the dark reddish, um, the, the deep, reddish color in our coat so I can punch up some of these areas like in here um you know which is kind of a center of our forehead I want to give her a little more color right there um, and, um then let's see what else maybe right here a little more color right there this could, is could you move the photo down oh sure so sorry yes. yeah absolutely Great. sorry um yeah so and this actually this whole area of her nose is was kind of like the that brown color stuff and then i said that um so you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it that well, but in the picture, there's a little, so it, it's that brown color, but then there's a glint of light that comes down right here, which is where her muzzle kind of goes down and turns the corner. So I am going to just give it a little bit of a highlight right here. And these are the things that you know, the more of these you do, the more you kind of recognize them like, oh yeah, this is where this part of the bone structure of the face happens. Um, because sometimes they can be just impossible to see. Um, and I'm gonna stop on this here. Um, so the other thing I wanted to do was to go back in and add some cobalt blues um, to, because she has this blue light on her in the photo and I didn't sort of include it because I, to be honest I tried painting her incorporating these blues much more severely and it looked weird so <laughs> I'm gonna try and add but very subtly and I'm probably gonna add a little bit of the cerulean in there too um I'm not quite sure where those blues were coming from but I do think that they're cool looking and I kind of want them to in the portrait. So you can kind of see that the first one's on her muzzle right here, and it kind of goes across her muzzle over here. And you don't need to add a lot of it, it's just like a very little suggestion of that blue without putting so much in that it looks like you know, going into the green territory. Um, let me just kind of soften that up. And you just want to suggest that there might be like some blue reflection, but without giving her like a full on blue muscle. Um, 
it kind of hits a little down here. And you can see like my default, like I'm not entirely sure about the color is to like put it on and then dab it off, which is really not effective, but it's how I compensate for like, oh, am I gonna like this? I don't know, <laughs> put it on and then dab it off right away. Um, okay, and so up here, she's getting hit with it up here again. Um, you can kind of see it right here towards the back of her head. Um, over here, and then there's a little bit of it at the top of her ears. Um, and kind of some to this eye, a little bit. And then, um, let's see down here, but it, it definitely shows up in her body. Um, you can see right here, there's a lot of that blue. That's where it's really hitting her. Um, it kind of blends into the skin. But you get some more blues going on through here. And then it's really mm -hmm. it's part of that shadow that's kind of going across her whole face. Um, and I would because it's all part of the same shadow. Um, and then we get this a little bit more of that shadow right here. So shadows are something that, you know, I'm always kind of going back and forth with. Like sometimes, you know, I try and add them at the beginning, but then I know that towards the end as I'm fine tuning things, I'm definitely gonna need to add more. I'm gonna need to like emphasize or make them cooler or make them warmer or whatever, um, because it all changes as soon as you add the paint on top of it, which is kind of one of those characteristics of watercolor that, you know, it's, it's sort of a dynamic medium that changes a lot because it's transparent. So that's about, that's about where I would. Oh, and I definitely want to put it on her nose. So that's, a, and then I would also like to add a little bit more detail to her ears. Her ears kind of got like. A good way to know, um, another good sort of piece of advice that someone gave me or I just uncovered along the way was when you're dealing with contrasts and values, um, a good way to tell is to blur your eyes when you're looking at your source and just, you know, that's where you, that's what's gonna reveal where you really need to throw your focus in. Um, if something grabs you when you're kind of unfocusing your eyes and looking, then that's something that's gonna need to translate in the actual um, Everything else is, you can sort of consider it to be optional. Um, and like, you know, that's up to you how much you wanna work into it and how much you wanna just lead it. Um, but, if you blur your eyes and you see that there's like a huge discrepancy between what you've done and what the photo is telling you, then that's a pretty good indication that you need to like go back and pay attention to the area that, you know, is grabbing your attention when you're kind of looking at it in a fuzzy way. Um, so that's about, that's about it. I mean, now, um, I can, and I splatter, so these little splatters here, I just go and pick up with the brush. Also, if I were going to be doing the background, um, and, you know, for this one right now, you can kind of see they're lying on a, a dark brown bed, which is fine. Um, I mean, it's, it's good in that it contrasts with the color of their fur, so it does sort of pop them, but it's, it's kind of a boring 
that if um, if I were doing this portrait for someone and they didn't really have a preference, which is 90% of the time, they just kind of go, hey, do what you do and I'll be okay with it, which I, I know I'm very lucky to get that. Um, I would probably choose, you know, a good complementary color that's going to look really good against the sort of orangey, yellowy coat. Um, so, and given the blue light that, you know, we've added to the highlights and to some of the shadows, I would probably go with like a blue or maybe like a gray blue bed that, um, that's a pretty deep color um, so that it's it's gonna pop out these dots which are sort of inherently light in value. So um, that's just always something to keep in mind with a pet portrait too. Um, just anytime, you know, take the, the color of their fur into account, take into account, um, you know, what is going to make them pop and what part of them, you know, if somebody talks to you about their pet and they love their coat and that's like what the owner is most proud about, then you're, you're obviously going to draw the, the viewer's attention to their coat instead of maybe to their face. Um, I just painted a dog um, for someone who was blind, the dog was blind and she had, um, she had eyes that were basically light blue orbs. And it was such a cool experience painting her because her owner just was like, these are the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. And she actually contacted me after and said, the day after we got your portrait, we found out that she has glaucoma and we have to take her eyes out. So I'm so glad that we actually got a portrait of her beautiful, you know, white eyes, white blue eyes. And so, you know, you never know what it's going to be. And those are questions that, you know, it's good to ask someone if they're coming to you for a, for a portrait, like, what is it about your dog that, you know, or a cat or a bird or whatever that you love? Um, because that's another thing they're going to be looking for. So anyway, <laughs> that's about all. <laughs> if anyone has questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Amy. Sure. So I assume that when you paint a pet, you're going for some sort of realism. Yeah. Because you want the pet owner to be able to recognize the dog and exactly. know it's there. So it's, it's very yeah. similar to painting a human it, yeah. portrait yeah. in that regard. You know, it's funny because I actually, in my work um, that I do, you know, I show in galleries and stuff that's much more I'm bold colors I you know purple bears I, I just do you know that's where where I like to go but I found that when people contact me about you know memorializing a pet nine times out of ten they really want it just to look exactly like their pet yes <laughs> so that's my goal when I do these um I go back to realism um but you know, I always give them an option, like if you want me to, you know, have fun with this and you don't really care, then I'm happy to go and yeah. like turn it into <laughs> something, yeah. you know, more colorful and, and sure. fun. But um, yeah, it, it, it's been interesting because that's definitely come up. And when I first sort of departed from realism and went towards these colors and patterns and everything, um, I, I really kind of was torn, like, okay, what do I do about the portraits? Because that's kind of my bread and butter. And um, I found that, you know, I really just, it's also a nice break for me, like to go back and forth, like to do some realism and then to go over and mm -hmm. do stuff that's a little more whimsical and, and you know, creative, I guess is the right word, but. Psychedelic. Exactly, yeah, like psychedelic. There, now you've been called that, yeah. <laughs> going on there. So would you like to show us some of your other Oh work? yeah, sure. So I brought some, these are all actually um, really old because I realized when I started looking around that all of my portraits are, that have gone to their owners. So I don't have a lot of them ready, um, you know, framed or anything, but um, this is just a little puppy one. If you one. Put, it, put it on, on your work. Surface. Oh, oh, good idea. Yes. <laughs> so, that, so this is one that I did of one of ours when they were a puppy. And again, this is like a 
This is a good treatment sometimes. Um, sometimes it's really hard to figure out what to do with the background. And like I said, I like to use those blues when I'm doing the yellow labs. Um, but to vignette it where you don't take the background color all the way to the end, um, you kind of, you know, do a little lost and found and, and that's a nice way to, and a, a nice treatment for the back of a pet portrait. I find a lot of people are happy with that because it's less of a commitment. Um, and it, it makes it look like someone just sort of dashed it off and mm -hmm. <laughs> gives it that kind of you know, fresh look. Um, and then let's see. So this one, um, this is a really early one. And this one was sort of before I got the hang of it. So you can kind of see how my style has changed over time. And this is our, um, our old Bernie's mountain dog, Amelia. And what I loved about her, her coat was black and this rust and white. But in the sun, her coat would look, you know, her, the black part of her coat had this beautiful rust color that would come out and um, it would catch the light. And so this, this would count as, as a portrait where, you know, I really wanted it to be more about like all the different colors in her coat and how they changed in the sunlight. And so I kind of had fun with this one. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she was in our yard and kind of laying around. But this is a really, really old one. Um, and uh, let's see, so these are, this one was one of my favorites that I did for someone. And I actually made a print of it because I just loved, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe what a gift it was getting handed this photo to paint because mm. they had done it and they just were like, oh, can you paint Hopper for us? And I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like he's totally covered in lines. It's the cutest thing ever. So um, I had a lot of fun with this one and um, just doing the Christmas lights around him was, was really a good time. And he was such a, such a regal looking dog and then the Christmas lights were just hilarious. Yeah. So. Um, and then the last one is, again, it's actually, this is Maisie when she was way younger. Um, and again, this is a early, early one, but um, this was her when she was, I don't know, maybe two, and she passed away in 2019, and she was 14, so mm -hmm. it's a lot, it's really old, but um, yeah, this is, and you can kind of see how they're, and I had fun, this was one where I sort of challenged myself to go really fast, and I was kind of trying to see how fast I could just detach from the result and just push myself as fast as I went. And I actually had a lot of fun with it. And I had a lot of fun with the background. So anyway, those are just some examples. And yeah, um, <clears throat> thank you guys. Thank, for... thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Very fascinating. <laughs> um, I'm a watercolorist. I haven't gotten into to port to pet yeah. portraits, but it looks like a fun thing. To do. It is fun. Yeah. It's really yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's just you know, that for me, for some reason, ever since I started, I, you know, the organic shapes are always what have spoken to me and animals, especially. And I, I'm very close friends with uh, an artist who used to be an architect and she can do mm -hmm. cityscapes like, and I go to paint a building and I'm like, I can't, like, I can't. <laughs> yeah. like, but, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah. it's really funny how totally it different. kind yeah. of works. Yeah. yeah. And, and just, yeah. you know, but we've had, we've had a lot of fun over the years in different classes. And, uh, it's just, it's such a fun medium and it can travel, you know, which I like that I can take it on vacation and I'm there on the beach doing, doing my art. Uh, but it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, well, thank you again for thank a great time. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for, for coming and hanging out. <laughs>